Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to give you guys a two-year owner's review on my 2019 Honda Accord 2.0T Sport. I was going to do a Crown Vic video, but I just got this detailed, and while it's presentable and not trashed uh, with rain and grime and stuff, I wanted to uh, give you guys a review and what it's been like to own the past couple years. So without further ado, I'll kind of rock around the car and talk about some things I like and don't like um, over the past couple of years. Um, I like the styling. I mean, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't have bought the car. Um, but I guess I'll start out with a con is I think the paint is pretty thin up front. I got, I got rock chips everywhere. And, like, I don't do very much highway driving. So it's not like I get rocks cons consistently on the front of this. I don't know what's going on here. But, like, even down here, I got a scratch. I need to touch up with some touch-up paint. And it just seems thinner up front than any of my previous cars. Um, and that chrome bar too is a pain in the rear to get uh, clean. I just put on Goodyear Assurance Comfort Drive and the stock Michelins that were on this thing are were garbage, absolutely garbage. You're the Michelin Primacy MXM4, I believe. Best thing I ever did was get rid of those tires. They were terrible dry traction, terrible wet traction, and then snow here in the Midwest, downright terrible. Best thing you can do is get rid of the primacies on your car and swap to something a little more friendly uh, for the Midwest, a good all season. And that's the one I went with. Definitely improved uh, my dry traction, wet traction, have yet to test them in snow, but I, that is a miles ahead improvement compared to the Michelin um, before. But yeah, I mean, as far as like exterior goes, I still love the styling. I typically get rid of my cars like every one to two years. And I don't have any plans to get rid of this one because um, I actually like it. It's my first car that is, like, not boring. Um, it's very quick and just, you know, it's fun. It's a, it's a great car. I mean, there's a reason why these things win so many awards and so many people can't hang on to these things for a long time. is just because they are truly a great car, um, hands down. Under the hood is that 2.0 liter turbo. Um, it's mated to the 10-speed automatic transmission. I have no real issues um, with it, major issues with it at all. Actually, I've had zero issues with this powertrain at all. Um, but a big gripe that I have is that 10-speed is really jerky. Um, I know some car reviewers and some people are like, oh, no, it's just like butter. Um, you know, I've driven a couple other 10-speeds. and Maybe I'm just used to, like, 4 or 6-speed transmission, but, but this 10-speed... Uh, I, I, nah, it doesn't shift very smoothly at all. I mean, there's times if you're driving it around town, um, you know, you get hard downshifts, hard upshifts. Um, I'm like, hmm, interesting. But hey, you know, it's a Honda. Hopefully they, I guess they stand beside their products because I've had zero issues at all with this thing so far. And uh, just an observation if you're looking at these, or if you're looking for a car that has a really smooth transmission, this probably isn't the one for you. Get the manual or maybe get the CVT 1.5 later. Uh, just, just my experience and based on my you know, driving some other 2.0Ts. Um, yeah, like I said, not the smoothest. But, I mean, I'm able to do everything here. I mean, the battery's easy to replace. That hasn't gone out yet. But, like, fluids and all that stuff is easy to service. I do my own oil changes. And I am not mechanically inclined at all. And if I can do an oil change on this thing, you guys can. It's a good powertrain. All right, let's kind of move on to the interior. I did put uh, Husky liners in, and I went with Husky liners over WeatherTech because my wife has WeatherTech in her Taos that are like two months old, and they are already folding in on itself a little bit. These Husky liners I've had since I bought the car. They still hold their shape really well, and uh, they're easy to clean. So if you're going to get all-weather floor mats, highly recommend Husky liners over WeatherTech any day. I do have sunroof heated cloth seats. Um, and you know, that's about it as far as options go. Um, we'll kind of go ahead and check out the trunk. Plenty of space back here. It is kind of dirty. I got a couple pickleball paddles and my roadside assistance, first aid kits and some athletic shoes. But I mean, even with all that stuff back here, I still have plenty of space to put a ton of things. I've traveled several times in this car and was able to jam pack this trunk full and then some. <laughs> and, uh, no complaints here. It's a good car to travel in or haul stuff if needed. Um, this opening's pretty pretty wide, so you can get 
um, like dehumidifier or an office chair or something in there um, and it'll go so no complaints about uh, the cargo space in the back go ahead and check out the back seat you get a ton of leg room back here it's one of my favorite things about this car is the amount of leg room you get I mean I'm six foot and then when I sit back here I mean I got what six seven eight inches of leg room and they have rear seat vents which is awesome too so they're not too hot or too cold because this is a giant cap so yeah no complaints about the back seat here I mean you get the couple cup holders and um, you know a couple map pockets it's it's a very nice place to be um, your rear seat passengers will not complain at all it does have the smart key access system all you got to do is tap that to lock tap this to un or pull the door handle to unlock it's got a touch sensor in the back um, zero complaints with that at all that's worked perfectly uh, for me the past couple of years and we'll go ahead and get in here and start it up makes a nice jingle so love that gauge sweep um, no complaints in here at all the driver's seat is very comfortable the driving position is extremely comfortable um, visibility is great I mean that, that window back there hopefully the camera's pointing in the right direction but that window back there helps out a lot with visibility dash cams chiming at me to format the card um, but no complaints at all with the interior. Everything is within arm's reach. I don't have to lean forward to, you know, press a button and adjust my climate controls. Um, it is perfectly laid out in here. Just a very nice place to be as a driver. So let's go ahead and take it for a spin and uh, drive it around a little bit and see what it's like to drive. The turning radius is terrible. If you're trying to make a tight turn to get in a parking spot or something uh it is just really bad <laughs> not a very maneuverable car in a parking space or um, tight situations i uh, wish hope honda fixes that in the next generation accord yeah no squeaks rattles nothing after 32,237 miles which is awesome. No issues with the infotainment at all. I use mainly Apple CarPlay. Um, haven't used Android Auto or anything, but it just works. One of my favorite things about this car is how quick it is. I mean, it just launches you back in your seat. It is hilarious. literally pushed the camera back into my forehead and I hope it didn't mess with the camera angle because the camera is like so hot on my forehead right now holy cow jeez um, but yeah it's one of my favorite things about this car it just goes um, no hesitation at all um, you know like I said about the transmission it's not the smoothest one out there but if you need to go it'll go fails to put a smile on my face um, something that I noticed uh, is recently actually is if you put mid grade or higher it runs significantly better and you know I, lot, I know a lot of people on the forums and a lot of people just in general are like oh it's not going to do anything you're wasting your money blah 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 blah. Uh, I don't know I think you guys should try it yourself because um, it's definitely not me my wife noticed it too it runs significantly better. Not that it runs like crap on regular gasoline, but you can kind of feel like it just kind of pulls timing. It pulls power just a little bit at certain areas. And with like mid-grade or like premium, well, I've only run mid-grade. I can't say premium, but with mid-grade, I mean, it just, it, it runs so smooth. It's perfect. Um, it's a night and day difference. I mean, I can't really say that it gives, you know, a ton of, okay, buddy. I can't really say that it gives you know more power because I can't. You don't really feel more power, but as far as running smoother, um, definitely, definitely, definitely helps. Um, so, suggestion to all you 2.0T Accord owners: put in premium or mid-grade or better fuel, um, and 
I think you'll notice a difference. Actually, I will have to chime in here and say my number one complaint with this car besides the turning radius is the road noise. Holy cow, it is so loud. It is, it's honestly kind of ridiculous. I put on these new tires and that quieted it down quite a bit, um, but it is extremely loud. I mean, you, you know, you can turn on the radio and it kind of drowns some of it out, but um, if you're looking for something that's really quiet, yeah, don't, don't get one of these, uh, you know, get an Acura or um, a luxury car. Um, I didn't really buy, buy this for it to be a quiet ride. I kind of expected it with the 19 inch wheels and stuff, but um, <laughs> it's pretty loud. Um, I'm kind of looking into uh, sound deadening mats and things like that um, to kind of quiet everything down and um, make it to where it's not so loud at a highway. Uh, I think I measured at one time and it was something like 75, 77 decibels at uh, 60 miles an hour on a highway. Um, granted, that's, you know, pavement specific and a lot of other variables in that situation, but um, it's loud. That's all I'm going to say. Now, as far as, like, driving modes, you get, you know, Eco and Sport. Um, Eco is useless. Uh, I never use it at all. Um, it just kind of lightens the throttle just a little bit. Sport I use occasionally. Um, all it does is just keep your revs up and uh, allows you to, you know, allows the transmission to maybe shift a little bit quicker, um, but it's also kind of useless as well. I mean, um, I just pretty much leave it in normal and uh, just let the car do the work. Um, but, I mean, if you put it in sport, you can kind of use, it gives you your turbo um, pressure in that gauge there, um, and you can, you know, manually shift it. traction control there oh that's funny but yeah I mean you know the paddles are pretty pretty responsive um, you know especially you know when you rev it out a little more um, it's wanting to shift a little quicker when you engage the paddle I kind of want to bring up the topic of fuel mileage because I feel like I should cover it but if you're looking to get good fuel mileage in this car and if you're looking to purchase one uh, this isn't the car for you you, you will get terrible fuel mileage it, below 30s easily. Um, you can get, you know, I've got 37 out of it on a highway trip, um, but like, you know, normal going to work or day-to-day -day driving unless you're um, strictly 100% highway, well, even then, it, it's just not a good car for fuel mileage, that's for sure. But like I said, I'm not complaining about that. I didn't buy it for fuel mileage. I bought it for, you know, not a boring car and you know something to have fun with and uh but just a note in case you're looking to buy one of these i'll also bring up uh the ride on this car too um it rides a little bit on the stiffer side but that's because it's a sport model with the 19 inch rims i believe um is what it's on here and you know it's to be expected you know with big rims like this if you're wanting a little more comfort you can get the like I think they come in 18 and 17, if I'm not mis mistaken. I could be wrong. I would encourage you to kind of opt for maybe like 18s or lower so you don't, you know, completely destroy a rim or a tire on a pothole. So I think that about covers everything on this car. Uh, after two years, uh, like I said, you know, no mechanical problems, no squeaks, rattles, or anything. Um, out of the ordinary, um, just to kind of TLDR. Transmission's a kind of jerky. The stock tires suck, and the paint on the front, or maybe overall on the vehicle, is kind of thin. And that's it. That's my only complaints about this car. And this is coming from a guy who it just gets bored with cars pretty quick. I don't have any plans on getting rid of this car, and it's just a great daily driver. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see more of this type of content, uh, please let me know in the description below. There's going to be some Crown Vic videos coming, um, including a POV drive and kind of a review like this. Um, so stay tuned for that, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. All right, see you guys in the next video.